is more of a gamble rather than a cure. And yet in our immune system, we do have cells like this, the natural killer cell, which I call the kiss of death. It can actually protect us from cancer. Most illnesses is caused by a malfunctioning of our immune system. When our immune system is overactive, gets stimulated, we get allergies, respiratory allergies to skin allergies. But yet when our immune system doesn't recognize who is the enemy and who is self, we get autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, or diabetes. It is an autoimmune disease. Your immune system, once it gets too weak, then we get all sorts of infections, viral infections, bacterial infections, including cancer. So your immune system works day and night to protect you. Every single day, there may be a tiny cut, or we may be breathing into some, into our body, some viral agents, bacteria, and so your immune system works day and night to protect you. Without an immune system, we don't need a virus. Just a single dust in the air is enough to kill us, and we will not survive for 24, 48 hours. Cancer. Every 30 seconds, someone gets cancer. Every 50 seconds, someone dies of cancer. Cancer is increasing at a rate of around 26% yearly. Out of every three of us, one of us is going to get cancer. But that person doesn't have to be us, doesn't have to be our family, because cancer can be very easily prevented. Whatever we're putting on our dinner table would determine when our family would get heart disease or would get cancer. Viral infections, including hepatitis, we really don't have a good drug against it. You have to depend on your immune system for it. If you eat a lot of animal product, a lot of meat, then your artery in no time is going to get clogged up, like this one. But if you look, you know, if you like to eat more plant food, vegetables, fruits, then your immune system will be improved and it would also help you prevent heart disease. So, our immune system is one of the most powerful weapons that we have in our defense against illnesses and we do not have a drug that can replace its function. All of the drugs that we have developed such drugs as immunotherapy, interleukin, interferon, you know, all these things, even though they mimic one of the functions of the immune system, but they all cause side effect because they are not complete. So stimulating one part of the immune system will not defend you from all illnesses. If we cannot use drugs to increase our immune function, then what can we do? we can use nutrition. But when it comes to the definition of nutrition, everyone has their own definition of it. So, the very first definition of nutrition for our immune system, it means a lot of plant food rather than a lot of animal product. Whenever we consume into our body a lot of animal product, our body will start to secrete a hormone called prostaglandin too. Once prostaglandin gets secreted, our immune system is immediately suppressed. So you do not want a lot of animal product. You do not want to eat a lot of meat. When you eat a lot of animal product, it also increases your metabolism because you're increasing and in consumption of calories and fat. When you increase your metabolism, it means you age faster. When you age faster, it means you die faster, so you don't want that. When you're eating a lot of animal product, you're also eating a lot of animal hormones, and animal hormones tend to cause breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, and we do not want that either. Animal product also contains a lot of uric acid, which causes gout. And we're also finding an association between children's leukemia we're finding that there is an increase in the amount of uric acid compared to the healthy children. So there is a connection over there. 
and on average, Americans, I don't, I don't have the statistic for Canadians, but Americans, they consume on an average at least 14 grains of uric acid. And our liver, our kidney, we're only able to eliminate eight grains. So what is the rest doing? Well, that's why you're seeing there is more and more kidney problems. There is an increased rate of gout. So animal product is certainly not the food for your immune system. I've got a girlfriend. This girlfriend, she thinks, you know, animal product, a lot of meat is nutrition because it gives them protein. Nowadays, you know, everyone, you know, they like, you know, high protein, everything. They think you know, as long as you've got high protein, it means, you know, really good physique. You know, you'll get muscles and everything. And so, you know, this girlfriend of mine, every single day, you know, she wants her child to eat one egg, drink one cup of milk, and, you know, she likes to give them a lot of meat because she thinks that's protein. So let us take a look into protein. There are different type of protein. So you compare, take for example, a plant protein to an animal protein. An animal protein is casein. Casein, this type of protein, we as humans, we can only digest around 50% of it. What happened to the other 50% that we cannot digest? It gets broken down within our digestive system, deposited in the tissues, and so we get allergies later on in life. So you're finding children growing up in soy milk, they get less allergies compared to children growing up with cow's milk. It is because of the different type of protein when we are consuming plant protein, it doesn't damage the functioning of our kidney. That is why the American Diabetic Association, they recommend soy protein instead of animal protein for diabetics. Women, we always think about osteoporosis. And we say, well, the reason we are getting osteoporosis, it is because we are lacking in calcium. If the reasoning is correct, then it would mean the more developed country, the countries that drink the most milk, that have the most calcium pills available, they should have the least number of osteoporosis, right? Well, take a look around USA. USA, one of the most developed countries, everyone has the knowledge about calcium pills. They drink milk just like water, and they rank number one in osteoporosis rate in the world. So, why? Why is, does it happen this way? Does it mean they are lacking in calcium? Not really. So, there has been research done. We did an experiment. And we are finding when we give someone a large quantity of animal protein, then we are able to find calcium in the urine. So where does the calcium come from? It is losing from the bones we're getting loss of calcium from the bones. But if we give in the same experiment, we give them the exact same amount of protein, but coming from soy, coming from a plant source, there is no loss of calcium in the bones. So osteoporosis is also associated with how much calcium you can keep rather than how much calcium you need. Some people, some mothers, they may get, you know, worried, saying, well, you know, especially in the Orient nowadays, you know, I just went to China, it was about two weeks ago, and when I was over there, you know, you see all these fast food chains, okay, and then you look at the advertisement. What does the advertisement basically imply? They were saying that if you eat a lot of beef, you eat a lot of the fast foods, then you are going to grow up to be strong and tall just like Americans. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, some people they worry, okay, if I do not give my child all this animal meat, then my child is not going to grow up to be big and strong. So I would tell all the mothers not to worry about it. You take a look around 